all right, all right. Um, <laughs> we are gonna go ahead and get started. We will I'll probably also have people filtering in as well. Again, I apologize. Thank you for being so patient. Um, I'm that's very, very excited about this one because I've got Carrie with me and we're Hello. together Cheers. in the experience room without masks. Yes. <laughs> of us are allowed to because we're both part of Team Pfizer. Team Pfizer. Yay! Yay. Um, so again, there's a lot to celebrate. Um, and uh, and we actually, we're going to start off, we're going to start off with the Prosecco. We're starting with wine this time. Um, and again, like I said, if you have a question, go ahead and drop it in the chat box. We do not have a and a function this time. Um, if I do not get to your question um, for some reason or other, if I miss it, you can always email me at chelsea at mollystones.com. And that is if it is a cheese question or a wine question, because we work together, we are department neighbors. Yep. So I can always relay those questions to her. Um, so, so yeah, um, we have the, we're going to celebrate with a Prosecco. And the reason I wanted to do this, uh, which I don't know if my, if my mom is not, but it was my mom's birthday last week. So uh, that's another. So that's another reason to celebrate. Yay! So happy birthday to my mom! Happy was, birthday! Yeah, it was, it was actually I think she's in the other room, but but they're gonna move everybody over. So, um, so yeah. So let's start off with we'll start off with the prosecco. Carrie's gonna tell us all about this. Um, <laughs> so it's Monte Chiaro prosecco rosé, and you're gonna notice rosé is on the label under the label prosecco, which is a new thing that started in. 2021. It's a brand new thing because most Proseccos have to be primarily the Galera grape and it has to be white. But now, um, come 2021, you can have 10 to 15 percent Pinot Nero, which is Pinot Noir. So there is some Pinot Noir in this, which gives it its beautiful rosy color. So this is exciting. It totally does. I know. <laughs> And what better to toast your mom's birthday yes, yes. than something rosy? May she have a rosy trip around the Most sun. Definitely. So happy birthday, mom, if you're in this room. I got you. <laughs> I got you. So. So. Yeah, like, let's see here. I don't, oh, da, 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 da. I think they're, she's getting on there. So uh, anyway. Very yeah. nice. Yes, very Cheers. nice. Yes. Cheers. So that Prosecco, the nose on that, you get the honeysuckle and the berries and fleshy nectarine and just beautiful. And if you notice, the bubbles are small and persistent, but this is fermented Charmat method, which is a tank fermentation. And uh, it's just beautiful. Uh, I think it, it, it over delivers for its price point. Um, it is a DOC, so it is really a Prosecco um, from Northeastern Italy. It is extra dry. Uh, I think it's lovely. It is. It's very classic. It goes with a lot of different very things. Very what would you pair this with in our lineup? Well, we are going to start off with the difference between mozzarella and burrata because that is a question that I get all the time um, and a valid question at that. Um, and like I said, I've got a lot going on right now. Um, I'm going to just take a moment. I know my mom said that she did not get the link. So if um, Erica, uh, if somebody could send that to her, if you need an email, I can throw that out there anyway. Um, but yeah, so the difference, what is the difference between mozzarella and burrata? Well, we've got the mozzarella that you have today is the Molly Stones Ovaline, which is actually made by Belfiore. Uh, they're located in Berkeley, so it is a local mozzarella. Uh, they make our Ovaline and our Chodini for us. Um, and the mozzarella, for one thing, it's a lot firmer than burrata. Um, burrata, you'll notice, is a lot more plush, a lot more squishy. And we've got the uh, Angela and Franco burrata today, which is very nice. It's very cloud-like. Um, both of them are made out of cow's milk. But you can also make burrata and mozzarella out of buffalo milk, which is going to be a little stronger, a little more gamey, and uh, a little more fatty. Uh, but both are excellent. Um, the biggest tell is when you slice into them. And so you'll see, if you just cut through the center here, and there, there's your mozzarella. It's super solid. Um, so I, I know I'm a little far away. And, and so Danny's uh, working feverishly with the camera and all the uh, technical operations. So I'm not gonna make her move the camera back and forth. Um, but yeah, if you've got the cheese kit at home, you can see that's you know your mozzarella completely solid inside. Whereas the burrata, the burrata 
is kind of like a mozzarella skin. And on the inside is something called stracciatella, uh, which is shredded mozzarella mixed with cream. Uh, stracchia is, uh, it means rag or shred in Italian. Uh, and you can see when you open that up, it's really creamy inside. See that? Yeah, look at that. That's really nice. And so there is, again, a huge difference in texture. And it, typically the, the burrata, yes, will be a lot creamier than, uh, than or your cow's milk mozzarella. Um, sometimes buffalo milk mozzarella, it's a lot more, uh, a lot more plush, a lot more squishy, um, but again, not, not like the burrata here. So the next question that I get um, is, can I, or how do I use them? Um, and you can use burrata and mozzarella in kind of the same way. It's really just gonna be a difference in texture. So when you're thinking about the kind of texture that you want, um, that's when you should decide whether or not you should do mozzarella or burrata. And one of the mo more popular items to make is the caprese salad, um, which is perfect for summertime. Our heirloom tomatoes are absolutely gorgeous right now at Molly Stones. Um, I have some sliced here. And um, it's, it's super easy if you've never made a caprese salad before. Um, really, really simple. And also you can, the way I make it, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Um, typically you just slice up the mozzarella ball, um, we're going to work the mozzarella first. See, so we're going to have like a little cooking show coming up. I know. It's just like, <laughs> really, really like, and then Carrie gets to munch on stuff too, yeah. which is just wonderful. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so you, it's just slices of the tomato, basil, and mozzarella, and it's super, super pretty. Um, and you just layer them. If you can see that, I'll, I'll do this and then I'll hold it up to the camera but again super simple doesn't have to be uh, super fancy or anything you could also do this on skewers too um that works really great like that that is summer on a plate i that know right look gorgeous. at that now you can do the same thing with the burrata but the thing about burrata is i like you pull it apart so I'll show you that same concept you lay down the tomato and then just take a dollop of the burrata like that and then just just plop it on top like that and then then you do the basil on it and it's just like oh, 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 oh. and then yeah see how that that kind of comes apart like that so yeah so you get two differences in textures here and that's that's yeah that that's what we'll do for for symmetry, and I'm really big on symmetry. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a fur goat, so I'm huge on symmetry. <laughs> so yeah, so like that, and then we'll do another basil, basil leaf on top. And then if you wanna get, you can also season it uh, with salt and pepper. I do have a uh, preference to season a little bit with salt and pepper, because mozzarella is typically not super salty. Um, so I just do like a little salt, a little pepper, and then you can do, uh, got some Molly Stone's organic olive oil. This stuff's really good. I use this all the time at home. Uh, that and the Nona Luisa, you can just pour that right over it. That's good times. And then if you got the kit, you got this great little bottle of aged balsamic here. I was so excited to include that. Beautiful bottle. Yeah, yeah it's a really great, it's just, ah, let me look at that. You just can't, and so yeah, just a little, Drizzle on top, and there. Now you've got you have super summertime on the plate. Oh, <laughs> it smells amazing. Yeah, the aromas super amazing. Of the basil yeah, and so, the tomato. yeah. So there you go. Again, really, really easy, and it's super summertime. Um, and that's the great thing about both burrata. I'm gonna get a napkin here and wipe my hands off. Um, that's the great thing about both burrata and mozzarella is you can play around with them a lot. You can also use them both in cooking, um, which is what I've got this little griddle for, which I'm gonna turn on right now because we're gonna do some fun stuff today. Um, uh, so 
Uh, yeah, I mean, you could use it, definitely use both of them on pizza. Again, it's a texture thing. So there's going to be a difference in the texture with, you know, the burrata being softer and the mozzarella being firmer. But when you taste both of them, which actually we should probably do that too. I mean, this is a tasting, this is a tasting, yes. right? So here, we'll try, always ch try the cheese on its own first. I know I kind of, I was very excited about making that caprese you. salad. You're very welcome. Mm. Let's see, very neutral. Very fresh, very neutral, milky. Your mozzarella should taste milky. It shouldn't really taste like anything else. Um, it's not like a cheese that's going to knock your socks off. Um, it should be a neutral cheese, um, you know, because there's so much you can do to dress it up. It would go with every wine. Oh, sorry. No, no, please, not go. No, it would go with every wine on the table. Mm -hmm. It is so neutral. It plays well with everything. And then we'll try the burrata on its own, which, yeah, you need. And this, you can just enjoy burrata like this too. I'm actually gonna put it on the little bruschettini here. These these little bruschettini are great. And so this is something else you've got in your kit. Thank you. Um, it is the perfect little palette uh, for the cheeses that we have today. And again, the you'll see the burrata, it's a lot creamier. Um, it's going to be, again, another sort of neutral uh, kind of cheese. But it's the, it's really the texture that you're experiencing right here. Does one have a higher fat content than the other? Mm -hmm. Right when you took a big bite. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I, I love the luxurious <laughs> texture of of the burrata. It is just, it seems more decadent to me because mm -hmm. of the moisture and how it washes across your tongue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's really very, very lovely. Um, but I would say typically, Typically, the um, the burrata, because there's cream in it, it's going to have a higher fat content. And this whole milk mozzarella is probably going to be about the same. Um, it also depends on where, where you're getting your milk from. Yeah. Um, but I would say, I would say overall, the the bur like this burrata that we have here is going to have a higher fat content. It's so luxurious. Yeah. It's so silky. It's, it's just phenomenal. It is wonderful, oh. wonderful, wonderful. Uh, and you don't have to drink all that. I would have a bucket. I'm sorry. No, that's I thought you were a humongous pour. I'm sorry. <laughs> Woo! It was no. your mom's toast. Yeah, for her no. birthday, yes. so. yeah. So, so very good. So, um, move, actually, uh, perhaps we should move on. Or are we going to move on to the rose next? Or? Yes. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, here we go. Oh. Yeah, because I think <clears> that the rose would probably pair quite nicely with those two as well. So we have a Central Coast Rosé from California Icons. It is a Grenache Syrah Morvedra blend. It is 60% Grenache and 20% the others. Uh, it is from a young up and coming winemaker named Ian McCaffrey. He's definitely someone to watch. He's a winemaker at Joel Gott and this is what he does on his side, on the side trying to launch his brand. Um, but it is a nice dry rosé, all central coast fruit, and just beautifully made. Like you get, if you put it to your nose, you get that fresh summer berries, a little bit of grapefruit zest. Mm -hmm. and that, yeah. yeah, but it, it's what you call a GSM rosé, but a domestic GSM. It's very smooth. Yeah, like that's remarkably smooth. It doesn't have an acidic bite. It, it has some nice roundness, stainless steel, um, aged in stainless steel, but it is thirst quenching and lovely. It's perfect for summertime. Um, I think it is just the rosé of summer, one of my favorites. Nice. That's it's why I chose it. I chose all these wines. Uh, either I, I know they're excellent values, very well made, and in many cases, I actually know the people who made them, and they're all great people, very talented. And Ian, definitely, very talented winemaker, and a great cost to value ratio. I think this one delivers beautifully. Oh, that nose. Yeah. 
just wow. That's very pleasant. <clears throat> it was very pleasant for rosé. Sometimes, I mean, I do like rosé, but sometimes it, I feel it can be a little dry, a little bone dry. I mean, you know, right? Carrie knows my palate very well. I do indeed. Um, so she knows that I prefer fruitier wines uh, in general. Mm -hmm. um, but so this one, yeah. I think this bridges the gap yeah. between people who are like, I like it bone dry, I like it fruity. It's 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 just such a it hits the sweet spot for everybody. Yeah. I think. I don't think anybody would argue about the quality of this rosé. Yeah. yeah. So if you, if you have the wines too, please. And again, if you have a question, throw it in the chat box. Um, I'm monitoring that right now. We don't have a Q and A function this time around. Um, and uh, whether it's cheese or wine, please. And then. If you have any questions at all, but yeah, just please Don't throw them shy. in there. Yeah. You yeah. Guys know or this. if you have an opinion, <laughs> if you think something's really great, if you think something's really not so great, let us know. We, yeah. I like, I like knowing that you, you know, you're engaged with us. We're all in the same room. It's like, it's like you're in our kitchen and we're just hanging no, out together. I want you to be in the please. same room. <laughs> yeah, I wish. So please don't oh, be shy. Oh, I mean, that's, that's why you logged on when we're here. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you for that. Oh, good. Thank you, Brandy. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you're enjoying the, the rosé. Uh, so, and this is actually a good segue into our next cheese, um, which is the Rizzo Brothers Queso Fresco. Uh, and this is a gr another great little cheese. Again, very unassuming little cheese. I'm actually going to put this over here. Um, because it's a, it's a fresh uh, Mexican cheese uh, that typically you use for, um, let's see, let me get my look here, uh, that you use that you use for like tacos or tostada salads, you know, some, it's something that people are used to using as like a topping because it's a firmer cheese, uh, cow's milk, and uh, again, another neutral cheese. Uh, and it's very easy, it's very easy to slice. You can see that's, that's your queso fresco here. Um, yeah, very easy to slice. We use the right side of our knife. Uh, here, go ahead and try Thank that. You. A little salty, uh, which is nice. Um, sometimes I like to put a little honey on it. Um, so it's a really good little breakfast cheese, I find. Uh, mm. But then you'll also see it, it crumbles. It crumbles really well. You can just crumble that, right? So again, as, a, as far as texture goes, it's a, also a very versatile cheese too. And so you taste it, just a little salty pop, not too overpowering, mm -hmm. but one of the reasons I like this little cheese, we're gonna, we're going to do something fun here. <clears throat> I love how fresh these cheeses taste. Yes, which yeah. is great well, again, for summer. Again, great for summer. You want a lighter cheese. You don't want something that's you know horrendously heavy. Um, and But also, what we do for the summer is we like to grill things, don't we? Oh, yes. Yes. Indeed. Yes, and so, and you can do that with cheese as well. Some of them, not all of them. Um, typically a firmer cheese with not a whole lot of moisture in them and there are a number of them out there um halloumi is one that's very very popular that is a cheese from cyprus that's made out of sheep and or goat's milk um, that is a really uh, very popular grilling cheese i have another cheese called bread cheese uh, which does not have bread in it um, it's just it's a another firm cow's milk cheese that's not seasoned uh, and that is also a good grilling cheese and queso fresco is another one of these grilling cheeses and so what I like to do here, and we're just going to keep this plain. Uh, we have a lot of fun stuff to play with. Um, you'll see in your kit that we're going to use a little later. But just rub it down with a little olive oil. And that prevents it from sticking. Uh, and you can use a griddle or you can use a grill. Um, if you can't see it right now, but to our left here, we have all these green eggs. This is the experience room has been turned into the green egg room. Uh, which if you don't know what a big green egg is, it is a, uh, oh, we've got a book. It's a, it, it's that. It's a, it basically, it looks like a barbecue, but it can do so much more. Uh, and you can, if you come to the Green Bray location or, uh, or I think the San Bruno location too, because there's a nice hardware, um, you too can have a green egg and experience the magic that is the green egg. Um, so you take your cheese that is bathed in olive oil and just set it on the griddle. I've got this at, I've got this at 250. I think I'm going to put it up to 300. 
Um, but yeah, you just set it there and you let it do its thing. And we're gonna let it do its thing. Um, <laughs> it's a, but I, I did this the other day just to make sure it would actually, you know, work out all right on this thing, this little griddle, uh, and it worked out very nicely. So this is going to be amazing. Nice. Just the sound of the sizzling, yeah. the sizzling yeah. cheese on a grill. <laughs> I don't know if you can get out. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, maybe. oh, I mean, okay. Oh, it's like Ian. Yeah. Hi, Ian. Okay, so that works that you're doing amazing job. You're making me hungry. Oh, good. Oh, wonderful. Oh, that wonderful. Great. Oh, that's the wine oh. for Ian McCaffrey. Cheers, oh, Ian. Okay. Oh. Oh. And Mari, thank you. I'm glad you're you're interested in grilling cheeses. I can I can talk about grilling cheeses um, all it's day long. Literally yeah. grilled cheese. Yeah, it really is. It is literally grilled cheese. I don't know. I'm going to assume that you guys can hear that on the microphone. Like, the microphone's right here and the girl's <laughs> right here. So, hopefully you're enjoying this. Um, I'm enjoying this, yeah. this rosé. I cannot believe how good this rosé is. Yeah. It's opening up beautifully. Now, here's a question. Um, would this, not only would it work with the rosé, but would we be able to work into to the next wine with this one? Would it, like, would the grill hit the fresh grill? Oh, <clears throat> all of these wines are, or all of the cheeses are so neutral, they'll, they'll pair great with any wine. Perfect. Okay. Well, while this is doing its thing, let's go on to the next Okay, one. I think that's a, I, I hate dumping that rosé. It's delicious, but we've got So, it Randy, my griddle right now is at 325. Um, I had it a little lower at first because I could feel the heat uh, radiating off of it. Um, but let's, we can take we can take a look at progress. Um, so you'll see. Yeah, so that's just, that's where we're at right now. If um, you could smell yeah. what I'm smelling. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> and it smells this. But yeah, whatever griddle you have, um, you know, play around with it first uh, before you really commit to it. I mean, that's what I was doing at work the other day, just to make sure. I mean, a griddle like this, it's actually super easy. It's nonstick. Um, it's not, you know, you're you're not, you don't have a whole hell of a lot to work with. Um, but when you're using a barbecue or a grill, that's when temperatures do really matter. Um, and you do really want, it's going to, probably going to be a trial and error, but really you're applying heat to cheese it's usually a delicious result, regardless of what it looks like. <laughs> Absolutely, it smells amazing. So would you like Sauvignon Blanc or Pernod Velvet? What are you gonna move for? Uh, let's, let's go for the Sauvignon Blanc. Let's go for that. Let's okay. go for that. Pony, Derek doesn't Pony. like Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I love Sauvignon Blanc. So I like, like this one. This is why we get along so well. Opposites attract. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. You're so funny. Okay, so this is Honig Sauvignon Blanc 2020. It is 96% uh, Sauvignon Blanc, 3% Semillon, 1% Muscat. 75% of it comes from family vineyards in Rutherford. The Honig family, one of the reasons why I chose this wine, uh, aside from the fact it is an excellent example of Sauvignon Blanc. I actually do like this one. Um, is that it's a family winery. Um, Stephen Honey himself calls on my account. So what's really nice is that it's like, they really do own and operate the winery. Uh, and it really comes across in the quality of the wine. Look, at, look at that. that. Oh my gosh, oh Gordon. And then Lily, um, just to answer your question, cast iron skillet on the stove. I'm not sure because I've never done it before, um, but I would make sure that it, that thing is well oiled. Um, I would actually probably um, more recommend something nonstick on your stove because uh, cheese, regardless if it's a grilling cheese or not, does like to stick to things. But I've never done that before. You could try it out and see what happens, but yeah, definitely use a lot of oil on that one. With oil? Yeah, yeah. it should be okay. Yeah. 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 So... It is an excellent Sauv Blanc, I think. The so. nose, I, yeah. yeah. One of the things that throws me off on Sauv Blanc is sometimes you get a, and it is a true tasting note of Sauv Blanc, is cat urine. Mm -hmm. Some people love it. No, it is. It's it's a very good no, no, thing. It's a totally. And, and that comes from vine stress. Those smells come from vine stress, mm -hmm. from um, maybe they didn't water or they didn't fertilize or something's not quite right. This has none of that. It's pure fruit expression. Uh, on the nose. Well, we did have a question going back to the rosé. Uh, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, the flavors of the rosé seem to be enhanced as it sits for a minute. Is 
that the air hitting or the temp of the line? It, it well, it's both. Uh, it, it is opening up with air, but also the colder a wine is, the less it's going to taste. It kind of shuts things down. So let's say you buy a really inexpensive wine, you're going to want to serve it cold. The better the wine is, the better it's going to show at a slightly elevated cool temperature. So uh, I would say the California Icons Rosé is of the quality where you could drink it cool on, on, the, on the cooler side of, of not really cold. So that's what's nice is when I open up a bottle of wine, what I like to do is I try it right out of the refrigerator and then I'll sip it and let the wine tell me what the proper temperature to serve it is, unless it's listed on the bottle. So I'll, I'll sip it and with a wine like this, I would, would serve it cool because it is a very good quality, very nice rosé. But there are some wines, like I'll buy an inexpensive uh, cava. I'll drink that ice cold because it's going to taste really good. It's going to shut down the subtle uh, deficiencies in the wine. But this wine does not have deficiencies. If anything, it is nothing but strength. So you're going to want to serve it on the cool side. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, that does make sense. Yeah. Thank you for that question, Carolyn. I really appreciate that. No, this is, and this is really pleasant. The selling of a long bit. I do like this one. Yeah, it's, it's very balanced. Nice. Very, very balanced. Yes, and you get some kiwi. Um, what do you smell? A little bit of grass. Subtle, subtle, very hint. A bit of lemon. It is quite, It is a little citrusy. Not citrus. really citrusy, but... And I even get some crushed stones in there, which is nice. That's also a good sign of a vineyard terroir. But the fact that it doesn't have that cat pee aroma, yes, which is yeah, common, yeah. It, it tells me that there was no vine stress. Uh, the honig is beautiful all the way around. Classic Rutherford. This is a, uh, a so long from Napa, family made, family owned, family operated, and all done sustainably, which is nice. It's like the sidewalk on the Philippines. The side, the sidewalk. <laughs> yes, yes. That's, that term is called petrichor. Yes. There's a word there for that, petrichor. Yeah. So indeed, yes, yes, I do get petrichor. I'm so glad you know that term. Yeah, because I knew, knew there was a term, I just didn't know what it was. Like. And oh, so, wow. here we go. Look at that, yay! Oh my goodness, so look at that. We've got, oh, that's that's just great. And this is, yeah, this is where you're at. I mean, this is this is where you wanna be. Um, and you'll notice, well, I'll put it here. It's a little, like, it's a little flush, but it doesn't melt all over the place. Uh, and so, oop! That, that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and then you just cut and serve. And the, again, with the grilling cheese, um, it, it that caramelization of the cheese just adds another layer of flavor to it. And again, super fun to do if you know if you're entertaining. Um, it's just something different to do with your cheese, and we all like to do different things with cheese. So give that a shot. And even just uh, grilling cheese as your guests arrive they're going to be treated to these beautiful aromas of grilled cheese. Yeah. It's very enticing. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so you, you have to do this. When this is all done, go and go and do this because it's, it's awesome. Oh, it's really good. Yeah. Caramelization, mm -hmm. subtle caramelization. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. And you can pair that again with any wine on the table. That's what's so beautiful about summer cheeses is that they're neutral. Yeah. They're neutral palettes. Yeah. So oh, that's great. And it's also, you know, it's um, a good uh, vegetarian alternative because, um, you know, grilling season, people are thinking, yeah, a lot of meats, which, yes, yes, a lot of meats. Cool. Now you can include cheeses. I have um, on good authority that the Gruner Veltliner should be spectacular with this. Okay. So may I jump in? Yes, go for it. Yeah, let's do this. So let's go on to the Joel Gott Gruner Veltliner. So you you may look at this and it's kind of like a, 
unfamiliar. It has the umlaut over the U, so it's Gruner and then Veltliner. So it's an Austrian aromatic white. And, oh, it should be really spectacular. I, I pre-tasted these prior to us getting started, and I got some brilliant stone fruit out of this. And I love the traditional, um, the bottle. This is called a hawk bottle. So you notice that the bottom is flat. A lot of these other bottles have what's called a punt on the bottom. So this is a hawk bottle, which is traditional of Bruner Veltliner. Oh, that's very different. It is very different, which is why I chose it. You don't expect wow, it. Wow, no, you don't expect it at all. So I get um, a little bit of what they say, petrol, a little bit of yeah. gasoline. So you get a little get, hint of gasoline, which is varietally correct, wow. and Riesling and Bruner Veltliner. It, it, so it makes you go, wait, what's going on in here? Yeah. Uh, I get like a, like a roasted peach. And then I also, white pepper is a huge component of Gruner Veltliner. Uh, but on the nose, this is varietally correct. Uh, it's good to drink this not too cold. Again, uh, with serving temperature, when it's cold, all the flavor molecules are packed really tight. As the, the wine warms up, those flavor molecules kind of open up a little bit and allow the aromas and flavors to come through. So this is a wine you're also gonna to wanna to drink on the cool side, because if you drink it too cold, it shuts down the petrol uh, and it shuts okay. down the really rich stone fruit. Yeah, I mean, it smells like a plastic bag. That's what I kind of, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's like, <laughs> well, like, yeah, which there's um, petroleum and plastic right, bags, exactly. so yeah. it's indeed petrol. Yeah. Um, and we have another question from Jan. Hi, Jan. Um, that is, well, the history of Peso Fresco did it really originate in Mexico? Um, so, uh, off the top of my head, I actually do not know, but I can certainly yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but I can certainly research that. What I do know is that a lot of the these types of cheeses they're considered basket cheeses, where they're very simple. Um, it's a lot. It's one of those things where. You know, a lot of families they'll have you know a farm or you know they have livestock cows, uh, and they'll take whatever milk they have left over and they will turn it into a basket cheese. And it's really simple. They would just cook the milk, add vinegar uh, and salt, and then uh, put it in a cheesecloth and you bind it into cheesecloth and and you know squeeze it out and let it sit for a while. And here you go. You have this really simple white basket cheese. And so that's where, you know, where queso fresco, something like queso fresco comes from. I do know that there are, there is a queso, this queso fresco is traditional to Mexico. There is a queso fresco that is traditional to Spain that is completely different. Um, I believe it's made in like a manchego style, which you'll find that a lot of cheeses from Spain are made in a manchego style, which is typically, typically it's a sheep's milk, sheep or goat's milk. Um, there is some cow's milk that comes out of Spain, um, but a lot of them are either sheep or goat. Um, and they're aged, they're, it's aged longer. Their queso fresco is aged longer. And I don't, and don't quote me on this one, but I am pretty sure that queso fresco originated in Mexico rather than it being brought over by the Spanish. I think actually the Spanish took the term of queso fresco and created it, they created their own themselves. But that may not be entirely true. I do have to look that up. But I remember, you know, looking up information about queso fresco because the two did come up as, you know, there's one that's Spanish and there's one that's Mexican. And this is the Mexican one that we're having. Um, and as, as far as I know, it is a, the traditional one. I don't know if there's any more history behind that, but most like, because a lot of cultures they do have their own basket cheese, like Italy, uh, ricotta. Ricotta is another example of a basket cheese. And again, really simple where you just cook the curds or you rather you cook the milk, you add an acid and typically that's vinegar. You can also use citric acid and then add a little salt, mix it together, put it in a cheesecloth, let it sit, and there you go. There's there's a family cheese. Um, that And that is something that, that is very, very, very common um, among a lot of cultures. 
Uh, so that hopefully that answers your question kind of, but definitely check back in with me. Um, and again, like I said, if I, if I don't know something or if you want to know more about something and I need to research, you know, you can always email me at Chelsea at mollystones.com or you can call me or you can show up at the store and you can ask me. <laughs> I am, I'm always available. Uh, so yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And Carrie, Absolutely. same thing too. Yeah, 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 you yeah. can literally contact me anytime, and I'm happy to help. I mean, seven days a week, we're researching, we're tasting, yeah. we're very passionate about what we do, this and is we want to share it with you. And what's so nice is that we get we get each other. Yeah, season one. Yeah, we're together. constantly throwing stuff against each other and, and all that. So, I mean, again, if there's ever a question, and if there's a question for the other, and the other is not there, you know, you can always give it to the other. Yes, and I will text, or we text each other back and forth. Yes. Whether we're in the store or not, it doesn't matter. Yes. We're there for you. But um, I want to mention that this Gruner Velt here is from Washington State. Really? So there's not a lot of domestic Gruner Velt Um There's some on the Central Coast, but this is Washington State. But I want you to notice how well this wine pairs with the cheese. It's like a beautiful marriage. And I want to mention that if you don't know what to bring to dinner, bring a Gruner Veltliner. Uh, it is the Court Dork's dream wine. I, like with me, I love Gruner. I love dry Riesling. That's what we would bring because it doesn't matter what you're having. It, it's guaranteed to go with literally everything. This might even go with grapefruit and asparagus. I mean, those are the hard things to really pair. But beautiful lemon notes. This is absolutely delicious. I am, and it's well under $20. Um, oh, nice. And so it's it very really, unique white. Very, very unique. Very I've unique. Never, yeah. So thank you. Thank you. For you're you're, you're new. welcome. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Austrian varieties and uh, I'm really glad that it, those of you who bought this wine, that you're adventurous, you gave it a try. So thank you so thank much. You. I yeah. hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> so. Awesome. Yay. We'll move on. We'll move on to the next cheese now. And uh, the next cheese we have is the queso Oaxaca, uh, which uh, is a, it's a great snacking cheese and it's also a wonderful melting cheese, uh, but not on the grill. But I'm going to show you something. Um, that I'm going to kind of piecemeal together because uh, it's definitely a great hors d'oeuvre. But what's great about the queso Oaxaca is that it's like a string cheese and it's something different that you can put on your cheese board too. You don't necessarily serve string cheese on your cheese board, but I think it's a fun thing. It adds, you know, a difference in texture. It adds uh, a difference in, uh, in flavor and it's just fun. And who doesn't, I mean, I love string cheese. This is something you grew up with as a kid. And, but this is like, it's not like that part skim stuff that you get. This is whole milk, um, another another Mexican cheese. Um, it's for grown-ups. It's for grown-ups, it totally is. Yeah, so yeah, really, really fantastic. And it comes, you know, it comes like this in this, you know, in this block here, which you all got. And yeah, you just, you just peel it off like that and you can just present it just like that. Or um, you can use the seasoning that I included in your kit, Zatar, which is a Mediterranean seasoning. Um, it's something a little different that I like to use other than Italian seasoning, it's similar but different. Um, there are toasted sesame seeds in it, which adds a nice little nuttiness to it. I really love this. It's so aromatic and so nice. Yeah, go ahead. And so this is another great way to serve it as an appetizer oh. is to season it with a little olive oil and za'atar. Um, and it just adds a nice little pop. Another thing that I discovered though, is if you kick it, well, okay. So you wouldn't do it like this because it doesn't, um, it, it just, it, it's not very efficient, but I just wanted to show you something because it made, it, I thought it would make a great little appetizer if you melted it on the bruschettini that we have here. But, be, and, but the thing is, what you would do is you would actually put the cheese, the marinated cheese on the bruschettini, and then you would put the bruschettini under the broiler for about a minute or two. But we don't have a broiler here, but we do have the griddle. So I'm just gonna do that. And um, don't, yeah, don't, do this really i mean it's not it, it's great it, it does work out it works out fine but it yeah it's not it's not practical <laughs> but it's going to be delicious um it, again something i discovered 
for because yeah if you were to put this on your grill it's just gonna fall right through as you can see like you can see already like it's very yeah i mean it's great but it's a great melting cheese they use this in quesadillas all the time so if you're looking for uh, something different to use for grilled cheese something for quesadillas definitely go for the queso oaxaca and again another versatile cheese you can use it for snacking and then you can also use it for melting and it's just yeah it's just doing some fun stuff so i just let it sit there for a little bit and get some get a little brown well now that's cooking you should cleanse your palate with some water yeah water is very important when you're <laughs> wine tasting um and especially if you're eating a whole bunch of cheese too because that salt it dehydrates you and that is why, well, not only for cleansing the palate, but keeping you hydrated. Water, very important. Yes, uh, it was a winemaking apprentice, and one of the rules was for every glass of wine, uh, a glass of water. Um, so it's important to stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. It keeps your palate fresh and lively, and it keeps you hydrated. But it, it, it gets you ready for the next taste, which yes. is this phenomenal. Well, while that's I saw that I'm just gonna leave that here. For you. I'm gonna put my my white glass over there. there this is one of my favorite Pinot Noirs. Oh God, it's so beautiful. Nice. Well, no, no, no. Please, I talk. don't want to distract. No, me. you're not. As distracting. you're cooking, I'm gonna. I'll look at it. Okay, oh so gosh. I'm gonna try to. Yeah, okay, so I, I don't know if you can. See. Look at look at that's doing. That's great. Yeah. Dark. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. And the smell of the herbs is really coming yeah. through because it's cooked. So it does this thing. Um, and then but I see it would do it on top of the crostini. And we're gonna let that we're gonna let that cool for a moment. I'll take more of this and I'll pop more of that on top. Yeah. Could you do it in a broiler? Yeah, exactly. You yeah, yeah. Broiler? You'll just do it in a broiler. Do that is that is how you should do this. Don't don't forget, like I said. Don't do it like this. I just want to show you like how delicious it can be um, melted. Uh, but yeah, definitely if you're going to do something like this, just, you know, you want to shred the cheese on top of bruschini. You could do it on top of a baguette. Um, or if you're doing grilled cheese, you know, something like that. And then, but if you're going to do it like this, yeah, you can put it under the broiler for, for a minute or two. Um, and then, and pop it out and you've got some great appetizers there. And what's with the seasoning too, with the olive oil and the za'atar. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, well, I, I, okay. I'll be the, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the herbs yeah. really come forward. Yeah. When I first saw it, I, I thought it tastes like pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was great. Um, which, elegant. speaking of pizza, um, another thing that I included in the kit were these roasted marinated tomatoes, um, because we wanted to include a fresh tomato in the kit, but we didn't know if, you know, if it would get squashed or, you know, so to avoid any sort of uh, weirdness in your kit happening, I, we included these roasted uh, tomatoes, which we carry in our deli departments. Um, they're with the olives. And uh, actually, try, you can go try it on them. But if you pop one of those on top of this cheese with that crostini, oh, yeah. Very, very fresh. It is, it's very fresh. They're very plump and very, very aromatic. Mm. Wow. And it yeah. is like a beautiful wine ripe tomato, which you don't always get. No, no. Again, also, when it is not tomato season, this is a great alternative. Um, so you're not getting a not so great tomato and ruining your dish with it. These are really nice. Now, yes, they are marinated. They have uh, garlic and herbs uh, seasoning going on with it, but still really, really lovely. Um, if you want something that's a really good alternative to a fresh tomato, uh, these are fabulous. That's a phenomenal option to be able to have the marinated tomatoes like in December, January, yeah. when all the hot house tomatoes taste like Styrofoam, yes, you know? yes, we so, do not like styrofoam meat. We're gonna do this. So, yeah. One thing that's nice is the za'atar really infuses beautifully with the cheese. Yeah. Another thing you can do with za'atar, my best friend is Armenian, mm -hmm. and what he does is he'll get a dish of olive oil and put za'atar in it and dip bread in it. Ooh. And that makes a delightful little, um, I'll bring a bottle of wine and, and, and we just eat that with some cheese. Um, so yeah, sprinkle za'atar with some of the Molly Stone's olive oil and dip it. It is just a phenomenal thing to do with za'atar. Za'atar seems like such an unusual it, uh, yeah, it does thing, but it's, it's not. It, yeah. it works. Yeah. You really 
you need to familiarize yourself with that part because yes. it is so yeah. versatile. And we do carry that at Molly Stones as well in the uh, the, uh, the baking aisle, uh, at least in Sausalito. I know. That, I mean, I'm sure. That, and I know there is some continuity to our stores, but yes, I, I, I know it's located on aisle six at the Sausalito location. Zatar is your friend. Yes. And another thing that's your friend is this phenomenal. This is my one of my favorite uh, Pinot Noirs that we have in the aisle right now. It is from Potter Valley, Mendocino County. No pause for just a moment. Thank you, Grant. Yes. <laughs> he said we need a torch. That's her husband. Oh, my husband. <laughs> <That's been great. laughs> You're yeah, absolutely right. right. So, yeah, yeah, thank you. I, yeah, Thanks, so which would be really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, yeah. so Pinot. Um, when I see a Pinot like this, I immediately get excited. You can see the light through it. It's lucid. It's clear. It's it's like a brilliant garnet. Um, that tells me it's a it's a fresh, lively Pinot. And when you put it to your nose. You get that bright cherry, uh, a bit of violet, that violet. When I get violet yeah. or rose petals wow. or something, it's almost like a Victorian experience. And then there's some, um, like a, uh, an olive-like quality, subtle olive. There's so much going on in the nose. Um, and again, with serving temperature, with a light red like this, you're gonna wanna serve it on the cooler side. So for instance, if I was having this with dinner, I would put it in the fridge 30 minutes prior to serving because it is a light red and you're going to want to drink it on the cooler side, particularly during summer. You don't want to just pull the wine off the shelf and drink it. If it's lukewarm, it's going to just shut down. It's like bath water hitting your lips. It's really una unappealing. Uh, but this is phenomenal. It never fails to deliver. And one of the things I want to point out is the low alcohol. Um, I'm 48 years old. I don't metabolize alcohol as efficiently as I used to. So when I see a wine that is 12.9% alcohol, that is dry, it's not sweet, mm -hmm. I immediately get excited. This is exactly the kind of wine that you can split with a friend over dinner and it doesn't knock a block off. It is just delightful. It is very nice. And you know, I'm not the biggest peanut fan. Yeah, with me, uh, it's all yeah, blocking yeah, 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 but, yeah, no. yeah, but it is, it is very pleasant. It is very, very pleasant. It's not, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, because me personally, I do like a heavier mouthfeel with my red, my reds, but this is, this is very nice. Yeah, I'm going to be buying a few bottles of this. We currently have it on sale right now. Mm -hmm. um, right now, it, this is the 2017 vintage that you're, you're likely to have. 2019 is coming out soon. They skipped a year. So that's the nice thing about um, Gavin McGinnis is the winemaker, grape grower. He does not release the wine unless it is perfect. He has every say in how the grapes are grown, how the wine is made. Uh, great guy. Uh, his, his daughter is also part of the winery. Um, her name is Anne Fontaine. We have the Fontaine Rosé of Pinot Noir. So there is a rosé version of this called Fontaine after his daughter. Um, I love it. It's beautiful quality from a small family winery, all done sustainably, which is why I selected it. It truly is one of my favorite roses. It is phenomenal. It's really very nice. Do you like it really? I do. No, I do. Wow. I do like it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm being completely honest. Okay. Yeah, it's because, I mean, it, yeah, for, for, you know, yeah, the flavor itself is very nice. Nice for you. Nice. Yeah, if I, well, because, well, because we'll be, the next one is a Zin, which I really like, but this is what, like, the flavor is fantastic. If I had, if I had my way, it would be a little heavier. And heavier is not feel. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, but again, very, very, very different. Cool or someone who's not too big on Pinot, so yay! <laughs> oh, should we try we it? We should, we should these? try the thing, yeah. Thank so, you. There we go. And look at that. I mean, it's a lovely little presentation there, oh. too. I mean, that's a great little summertime, mm. summertime Christini appetizer. Beautiful. Mm. Good acidity in this wine to support the tomato. Mm. Mm. That was a good idea. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. it's a really good idea. Wine and cheese is always mm -hmm. a good idea. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yay. Mm. God, that's beautiful. I hate dumping this, but I know we have to. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. Like, we can't, yeah. yeah. We're, 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 we're teaching here. <laughs> we're tasting, not drinking. But you guys can drink. Please mm -hmm. feel free. And if you have any comments to make, please feel free. We're here for you. This yes. is why you logged on right now. Yes. So we can talk. But to I you. assume you're enjoying it just as much as we are. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Fabulous. So we have got uh, a we've got our last cheese, which is the um, the Leclerc goat's milk feta. This is out of Wisconsin. This is actually a newer feta to what we've been carrying at Molly Stones. And I, I'm glad we just recently expanded the Leclerc line. I'm, we they make uh, they make a goat's everything is goat's milk um, from Leclerc. And it's really nice because they make different types of goat milk cheeses, not just chef and feta, which is what you usually find with goat's milk uh, cheddars. They, we do have their chef, which comes in an eight ounce log, but we also have a mozzarella and we have a ch cheddar um, and the, both are very nice. So I, you know, I encourage you to try them. Um, it's also a really great alternative because I do have a number of customers who look for alternatives to cow's milk, like, you know, mozzarella and like cheddar. So those are the two that I have. Um, excuse me. And this is a pure goat's milk feta. And you will see that um, it is it is a stronger feta too. Goat's milk fetas are, are going to be on the stronger side. They're going to be usually stronger than sheep's milk. And of course, much stronger than cow's milk. Um, and this one has a salty pop to it as most fetas do. They do have a salty pop to it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Oh, thank you. And Mari, she said that she um, she had moved on to the feta with the group at dinner, so she said that was a very delicious combination. Yes. Yay. See, and again, feel free to mix and match these wines with these cheeses. You know, it's not, you know, we have to go linearly just to keep things on track, but you, you can do all you kinds of stuff. You can go back and home. forth. Yeah. I purposely pick these wines to pair with just about everything, so there are no wrong answers. Yeah. And the, again, um, even though it's goat's milk, it's not tremendously gamey, um, nice and dry. Uh, and I, again, this is another one we're gonna throw on that griddle. Oh, no way. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I know, see, all kinds cool. of surprises. We're gonna do that. We can talk about the wine while we're throwing that on. And you wanna do the same thing, is you wanna rub it down in oil and throw it on there. And when you do this with a feta, you do want a firmer feta like this one. Um, you don't, I mean, there are fetas that are creamier. Um, yeah, but I, that is, um, that'd probably be better for, you know, maybe a salad or a dip, um, maybe not your grill so much. You do want a firmer, drier feta. Same thing if you're marinating feta, you want a firmer, drier feta, typically. Um, I don't I know if uh, people are, well, familiar with that that TikTok phenomenon. I don't have TikTok, but I heard all about it. The uh, the uh, baked feta pasta that was a huge thing and actually quite delicious. But yeah, you can use a creamier feta for something like that. Um, let's see here. What's amazing is that the feta by itself is phenomenal. It it's is delicious. It's Beautiful, wonderful. Fresh, lemony. Um, delicious but the fact that you're going to grill it too that's yeah. what's shocking that's going to like, be a good time there's more yeah i so i tried this i tried this before you know just to make sure that it would work out with this feta because that's another thing too i, I want to make sure that these things actually turn out okay um before I, I you know show up on camera with them um but yeah i tried it at work and i tested it on my co-workers and they were very pleased with the results so and another with this with this too um the za'atar goes very well with this. So what I would do is grill this off and then sprinkle a little za'atar on it. Ooh. Za'atar is your new best friend. Yeah. You put it on cottage cheese. So, you can put it with oil and bread. I mean, there's so much you can do. Yeah, there is so much that you can do. So we're going to let that do its thing. And then tell us about this zin. This zin is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, it is the 2017 Carol Shelton Wild Things Infidel. It is called wild thing because it's a native yeast fermentation. She does not inoculate for primary fermentation. The grapes are dry farm, all sustainably, actually organically. Uh, the organic thing is on the down low. We don't, it's not listed on the label, but I know it's 
than organically. Um, I actually am a personal friend of the winemaker. The reason being is about 11 years ago, I went on a tasting as a wine journalist and tried the Zinfandel. And I said, who is this person? I need to know who this person is. Who made the Zinfandel? It's blowing my doors off. And it was this like five foot tall blonde lady. And she made it. And I'm like, I need to know who you are. Who are you? These Zinfandels are phenomenal. This is a completely true story. And I became a wine club member. I'm a club member of Carol's for the past more than 10 years. And um, I love her wines. Uh, she's known as the Zen master of Zinfandel. Um, she started out in the late 70s, back when it was very difficult for women winemakers to break into the wine world. So she's really paved the way for women winemakers in today. So she's truly one of my industry heroes. But aside from her being an industry hero, her wines are delicious. They're fantastic. The Zinfandel's year after year, I've tasted several vintages. I was actually at the bottling of this, on the bottling line, and tasted uh, barrel samples of this as it was aging. I, I intimately know this line very well. And it is year after year, always delivers beautifully. Um, I hope you're enjoying it too. Um, beautiful, um, beautiful scent. So you put it to your nose and you get that rich blackberry, bit of earth, a little subtle bit of fresh saddle leather. Not funky weird no. leather, but fresh saddle yeah. leather. And dry herbs. There's a lot going on in that nose. And then that that, that rich dark color. It's, it's beautiful. And Zins are my favorite wine overall. Uh, and Carrie did turn me on to this one. Which is why I chose it. Yes. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I knew she'd love it, which is why. I chose it, but I love it too. Beautiful nose. Um, it's like a mouthful of plum and blackberries. Yeah. And a little, even a little bit of graphite. There's just so much going on in that. And I love that it's a screw cap. If you notice that most of our wines are screw caps, which is great for summer. Don't let the screw cap fool you. Um, that closure, I've seen it on $100 bottles. So. Uh, I love the Carol Shelton's in. So 14 months in American oak barrels, 20% of which was new. Um, and then there are some one-year-old and um, some older French and American oak. God, that is beautiful. So there's 70%, 76% old vine Zin, 15% uh, old vine Carignan, and 9% Petit Syrah. So it's almost like a field blend. There's just so much going on as it evolves over the palate. It's not your typical, like, good oh, Zinfandel. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of dumb Zinfandels out there. This, it's one you want to sit down and really enjoy. And some people are thrown off by the wild thing label. They think, oh, it's going to be some goofy, unserious yeah. sin. It is a serious sin. Really and good. the wild thing, again, does refer to that wild yeast fermentation. It's really lovely. Oh, and so... I have another thing that we did with Feta that I hope I don't know if Phil knows this. You can tell me Phil knows this. And I, I, I don't know. Um, but and that, while this is doing its thing, another thing that is very popular to do with Feta is to make a watermelon salad. Mm. The watermelon and mint salad has, has been very popular because you get that sweet and you get that salty, and it's great for summer. And I have to tell you, the watermelon that we have with Molly's right, at Molly's right now is fantastic. It's juicy, it's super sweet. Uh, I bring home, a, because we, we cut it into quarters, so you don't have to commit to an entire watermelon, but we do, cut, so we do cut them in quarters, and I bring a quarter home nearly every night, and my husband and I devour it, and my husband loves watermelon, it's very, you can't, yeah, he'll, I mean, he went down an entire watermelon one dinner sitting, um, but I did a thing, I mean, look at that, Ooh. look at that, yeah, see, yay, it's better yeah, make better watermelon. watermelon, and it's, yeah, again, here, it's pork, Thank you. Yeah, really, really simple. Um, you could cube the water, or well, yes, cube the watermelon, um, and then you could uh, you could either cube the feta. Oh, one second, my my earring is cut on my shirt. 
Technical yeah. What is this to say? Uh, what, is, what do they call it again? Technical difficulty. No, it's a um, uh, wardrobe, wardrobe malfunction. malfunction. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, or you, I, what I did is I just crumbled the feta, which I think is better instead of cubing it. Um, it would also actually work well with skewers if you cube the feta and cube the, the watermelon and then sprinkle the um, the mint on top. It does work. Yeah. It, it works. does work. Yeah, the mint is an herb but, yeah. and it does work. Mm. That's a beautiful summer treat. Oh, that's great. This is a big one in our house. Mm -hmm. We do this in the summertime. Mm -hmm. And what's nice is watermelon's a nice low calorie, refreshing, hydrating meat. Oh, if you can yeah. smell <laughs> this, I'm telling so you. So many fun things with that. Grilled cheese is the, is for, for now on, if I'm having guests, I'm grilling <laughs> cheese because just the aroma is immediately inviting, very tantalizing. So Jen is asking, uh, how old do you have to be to be an old vine? See, <laughs> that, thank you for that question, because I had, that is an excellent question. <laughs> That's a very sensitive topic. <laughs> um, technically, I am an old vine, which is why it's a sensitive subject. There are no official rules. It's a very, like, wild west thing in the United States where it's like, oh, it's old vine, but typically the rule of thumb is 45 years or older. So I am indeed an old vine. I'm totally cool with that. You kind of have to be an old vine to have this knowledge, right. but 45 years or older is typically what they say is an old vine. Um, and then there's ancient vine, which is like even older than that, which mm -hmm. they say is 75 or above. Okay. But everybody is constantly moving the goalposts. There are no standards. It's not like France or Italy or Spain where they're very like, it has to be like this. So, um, but, but the rule of thumb, like I said, is 45 or older is the old vine. So I'm your old vine friend. Oh, very good. I'm getting there. So someday we'll both be old vines. Yeah. Hopefully we can be ancient vines. Ancient vines, yeah. <laughs> no, but what's nice is it's like people, old vines like people. Um, it produces less fruit, but the fruit is of better quality, and mostly. So the flavors will be more intense, more concentrated, but not as prolific. And you think of an older person, it's like they're not just running their mouth off, they're a little bit more you know, yeah. focused in what they say and what they put out there in the world if they're living right. Wisdom. So, now wisdom. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, excellent. Uh, let's see. The Oh, Carol. Hi, Carol. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Carol is it's here. It's so nice to meet Carol, you. Carol, surely. I, I tell you, Carol <laughs> is my industry hero. She really is. Um, this year, she got 2021 uh, Winemaker of the Entire World for the Women Winemakers yeah. Organization. Or women, women in Wine. So uh, she's Winemaker of the World. So again, Carol more Shelton. celebrations. Cheers. To, to Carol to Shelton. Carol Shelton as well. And really? she said the, uh, the wild things in our, the vines, they're 65 Six, years old this year. 65 old this year. Carol, if I misspoke, didn't, please let me know. Please feel free to uh, comment. But really, if you see Carol Shelton on any label, I can bet my professional <laughs> reputation that it is a phenomenal example of wine. So we have Carol Shelton Zinfandel, Carol Shelton Rosé, Wild Thing. We also have Wild Thing Chardonnay. And then we have Cookie Blanc, which is like a white Rome blend. Uh, Carol's wines are, are phenomenal. And like I said, I've been a wine club member for 10 years. It's literally the only wine club I'm a member of. And so real big hero. I hope you enjoy Carol's wines as much as I do. They're just so beautifully made, so expertly, expertly made, and just structured wonderfully. So thank you for sharing that oh, with me. I'm really so this. honored to have you on here. Carol, this is great. indeed, because I talked about her a lot. I know, yeah. yeah. She talks about you all the time. I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and our feta is done. You can see we've got, woo, oh, it's great. Takes a little longer than the case of fresco, but that's okay. 
And you want that really nice caramelization on there. Oh, if you can smell what I'm smelling right now. It's good times. Oh, yeah. Indeed. Yeah. And again, it really just, it, it cuts just like chicken. <laughs> it does. It's nice and firm. It's it not is. Messy. It is nice and firm. Yeah, I was, can show you this. Yeah. So you can even put it on a toothpick or a skewer. Yeah, totally. You would totally, so you would, yeah, see, it just cuts and like strip like that. Yeah, or you would, what I would cube it, yes. Uh, but as you can see, it's it's super firm. It's not melty or anything, which is great. So you have that really nice caramelization on there. Um, really big hit. And then, would you like a little flat side? I just, I actually, want, we'll try it both. We'll try both. We'll try both. We'll try it with and without, because um, I think that's important. But they can try this cheese not grilled right now. Yes. Like Zatar yeah. and olive oil. Oh, yeah. Zatar and olive oil. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, I don't want to burn my coat. What a mouth. thoughtful person I know, she I is. She doesn't want to burn my yeah. mouth. <laughs> that, that would not be good times. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's yeah. It's not too hot. Oh, thank you, Carol. I'm glad. You, I'm glad you think we're doing a great job. Carol. <laughs> I love Carol. I really do. And I love well, yes. No, that's great. I, I care more about the feather though. What do you oh think? no no no. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> no, what's nice is when it's grilled, it has that subtle crackle of the crust. Mm. So when your teeth hit it, it crackles yeah. through the surface and then it gets to this beautiful salty creaminess. But it's it it it, it modifies the texture that grilling it. This this is a game changer. It is yeah. a mind-blowing totally. game changer to grill your cheese mm -hmm. prior to serving it. Oh, when your teeth, mm -hmm. the tooth of it is really a The texture is really phenomenal. I mean, it just adds to the flavor of it. Mm. Oh, with the zatar? Yeah. Again, zatar is your friend. It really is. There's mm -hmm. so many different uses for zatar. Mm -hmm. It seems like such an um, exotic word, but it really can be part of your daily diet. Yeah, completely. Oh, woo! All right. Oh my goodness. Oh, with this, with this zen. Well, I think, I think we're we're at it. So we're at five fifteen right now. With yes, we're going a little bit over because we've gone over. I had no oh, idea that we went over. It, it's okay because we started late, and I apologize for that. I really do. Uh, we did have some technical difficulties. Um, Kudos to Danny, who is the woman behind the camera right now. Um, she has worked her butt off to get this all together because Tim has decided to go on vacation. Our IT guy so, went on vacation. Yeah, yeah. So, so again, thank you for your kudos patience. to Danny and to Erica for getting this all together. Um, really appreciate both of you. Um, it, I mean, because it, it does take a lot. It does take a lot. Um, and again, I thank all of you, all of our audience members for being so patient with us. We really do enjoy having you here. And I promise you, we will always be here on the date and time eventually for you. Uh, we will always make it happen um, <laughs> regardless of technical difficulties unless something really phenomenal happens. Um, so again, and then Carrie, thank you so much for being yes, part of this. I'm, I'm so glad that we've been able to do this together. Yes, uh, I in just, the same room. In the same room. It, yeah. It's the first. This, this is the first. first. This is, it's like, it's an amazing thing. It really is. Um, and again, hopefully as we move along and hopefully as things take a more positive turn, we'll eventually be able to have some of you in this room with us at some point. I don't know when that point will be, but hopefully it will be it's sooner rather than later. Um, so again, I hope you enjoyed everything. Oh, I forgot to mention the apricots. I know these are in your kit too. These are the Amitri uh, apricots, which are delicious. Um, these are also in my department. And what's great about these, they're French. They're tender. They're tender because they're dried and then oh. they are reconstituted with 30% of their juice. So they're moist instead of being dry and leathery. Um, and again, in winter time, kind of like with the, the, the tomatoes, mm -hmm. it's something where you can think about warmer, more halcyon days. Mm -hmm. so.
I wanted a stone fruit in here without having to put a stone fruit in there. And again, the stone fruits are really beautiful right now. The white nectarines that I got recently, really, really beautiful. You sit on them for a couple days. Oh my gosh, they're like candy. So um, the Molly Stones, get some stone fruits. Blueberries too. The Sarah blueberries are back in. Oh my gosh. Get those while they get is good because those are amazing. Those are my favorite. I love those on top of cottage cheese. They're so tasty. So, okay, I know I'm running over. But I want to I want to bring up um, Sausalito Cheese Lady on Instagram. Oh right? yeah, there's that. Yeah, Sausalito <laughs> Cheese Lady, and I'm the Wine Fox. So if you go to Instagram, check out Sausalito Cheese Lady, and the Wine Fox. And also follow follow uh, Molly Stones under or Molly. Molly underscore stones, um, but you can find that on Instagram. Molly stones, yeah. Instagram. Please follow all of that, and then you'll know everything that's going on. Um, um, next month. So next month is August. Yes, she's right. It's, it's my birthday. It's Virgo. Yes, I'm a Virgo, and my so my birthday is on August 24th, and because my birthday is in August, I am going to treat all of you to my favorite things. In my department, I had to relegate it to everything in my department. But Carrie's one of my favorite things too, and she's going to be here as well. And she's also going to discuss my favorite wines with my favorite cheeses and favorite accompaniments. So please don't miss out on that one. That one, I am, I'm like, well, I'm always excited about these things. But yeah, it's something I always get asked that question: What are your favorite cheeses? And it, it's a very difficult question to answer. So you get a you get a window into what some of my favorite cheeses are. So again, uh, that is going to be on August nineteenth at four p.m. When when it's up, uh, please sign up for it. And yeah, and yeah, come back and join us. We're going to have please a great time. Please do for yeah. the birthday girl. Yes, please. yay! <laughs> All right. Cheers. cheers and cheers to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.